This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to Digital Perspectives, everybody. I'm Brad Kimes. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley and everything we're talking about here. First of all, salute to the one and only Mickey B. Fresh. He's got a recent interview here from Craig Phillips. That's right. Same Craig Phillips is at the Treasury. Same Craig Phillips at, the, at Ripple. You better believe it. Yeah, Craig Phillips from the CFTC breaking down Executive Order 13772, ordering Treasury Department to research non-bank fintechs. Hmm. I think it's in this video that we're really going to get what I've talked about here all along is, you know, a lot of people think the U.S. is dragging their feet. A lot of people, even we hear the tone from Ripple on Twitter, even begging the government to get this going and accelerate this process and move into this new digital financial system based on the, the, the current health situation across the globe. And look, we, we understand that that is a very real thing. I'm not trying to be dismissive of that. However, there was a global liquidity crisis before that happened. And this executive order was from all the way back in 2017. So when people say that the United States is lagging or dragging behind, I've never been someone who has thought that that was the narrative. I've always thought that they've really kept a lid on it. They've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes and it will be revealed at some point and whatever they're doing there, it may appear that we are going to lose the lead pole position in this new fintech innovative race, but we're not. And I think we're going to, you're going to know definitively, definitively today, excuse me, before we get done this video that we're not, it is a stack deck period. Shout out to Mickey B. Fresh, who will be on this show. We're going to work that out for next week. So very excited. We've done the pre-show already. We know what we're going to cover. And I tell you, it is going to be a don't miss episode. All right, now let's get into this because this is one as well. All right, so here is the actual full 23, 24-minute uh, interview. And it's very good. And you should listen to the whole thing. Mickey's been kind enough to cut up clips for everybody here. Let's hear the first clip that just lays everything out, and then we'll go from there. Here we go. Today, we have a very special guest from the U.S. Treasury Department. Joining us today is Counselor to the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Treasury, Craig Phillips. Mr. Phillips joined the Treasury in January of 2017 and assists the Secretary in a wide range of matters, including domestic finance, domestic financial institution policy, housing finance, and regulatory reform. From 2008 to 2017, Mr. Phillips served as a managing director and member of the Global Operating Committee of BlackRock, Inc. Mr. Phillips was the global head of the Financial Markets Advisory Group in BlackRock Solutions, which provided analytical and risk consulting services to a wide range of private and public sector organizations globally. He has been instrumental in many issues at the Treasury, but one of the areas that doesn't get enough attention is the work on the regulatory reform being done under his watch. To that end, there are several reports out from... So you get the idea of what Craig Phillips has done. And just a sidebar here, a side note, um, this is an older interview, right? But it's recently been released, if I understood Mickey's comments right when I looked at him earlier. Now, that gives you the layout of who Craig Phillips is and what was going on at the time. Let's go ahead and listen to these sound bites here. Over 81 discrete recommendations. One second. Report issued just last month in July 2018 covers non-bank financials, fintech, and innovation. For the fintech report, we met with or received. So there, listen, let me get this going again. How broad-based this topic is. 
We personally believe that it was impossible to truly understand the impact of regulation and the potential for alternative approaches without engaging extensively with market participants, which we've done throughout the series. The final report has uh, over 81 discrete recommendations, um, all of which we think are, are focused on uh, in improving the, um, the, the uh, financial economy as uh, per the core principles. 81 discrete recommendations to improve the financial system, basically. And listen to the first part of this again really quickly. Well, let's take a step back here. This report, issued just last month in July 2018, covers non-bank financials, fintech, and innovation. For the fintech report, we met with or received submissions from over 232 parties that shows just how broad-based this topic is. We personally believe that it was impossible to truly understand the impact of regulation and the potential for alternative approaches without engaging extensively with market participants, which we've done throughout the series. The final report has uh, over 81 discrete recommendations, uh, all of which we think are, are focused on uh, in improving the, um, the, the uh, financial economy. as Improving the financial economy and for non-bank fintechs. That's remarkable. Now, let's listen and cue this, for, this one up and listen to this. Treasury supports OCC efforts to launch a special purpose national bank charter. Hmm. And again, this is a little older, so we're hearing the initiative of all this, and we're going to hear where it comes from here in a second. Promote greater information sharing and coordination. The Treasury supports the OCC's effort to launch a special purpose national bank charter for fintechs. We also recommend efforts to harmonize state regulations through better coordination. This could take the form of a model law, for instance. Another example of coordination are efforts around the nationwide multi-state licensing system to reduce duplicative regulatory requirements and promote greater information sharing and coordination. The Treasury supports the OCC's efforts. Okay, so you get that. Now let's hear the next one here about the level playing field. Let me cue that up. Understanding that Craig Phillips helped really draft and write the executive order 13772, which we're about to take a look at parts of that in just a second. And finally, uh, the key is the level playing field. Treasury believes that the level playing field is very, very important. So companies offering similar services should be subject to similar regulatory treatment for those services across level playing field. Treasury believes that the level playing field is very, very important. So companies offering similar services should be subject to similar regulatory treatment for those services across the economy regardless of the form of the company. Uh, great point. This is really remarkable because, you know, honestly, here's Craig Phillips right here, brings more than 35 years of industry expertise to Ripple, having led, uh, high leadership roles. Morgan Stanley, BlackRock. Most recently, Craig served as counselor to Secretary of Treasury Steve Mnuchin, where he oversaw a regulatory framework developed for the financial system under Executive Order 13772, as well as efforts to enhance the financial sector's cybersecurity through the official of Office of Critical Infrastructure Protection and Compliance Policy. He also supported the development of policy for housing finance reform. Now, clearly you understand that Craig <laughs> director at Ripple helped write the executive order for the United States of America back in 2017. Now, we know just recently we saw this guy, shout out to Brian Brooks from the OCC, who clearly has made a real watermark moment for this space. It really is, as uh, Cryptopolis has said on this show, it should become National Crypto Day, the day that Brian Brooks declared and made that declaration in clarity for the national banking system to custody digital assets. Now, let's go over to here. Here is a part of Executive Order 13772. I'm going to bring up just a few highlight spots. Here is some of the appendix inside of 
Executive Order 13772 and participants in the executive order engagement process that he talked about to 200 and some uh, different companies and players they, they discussed with because of the broad nature of the topic and how impactful it was. You see Prosper here, Ripples here, Western Union here, and in another document, you may have a harder time seeing it on here, but is MoneyGram. So pretty remarkable what we're seeing here. Here we see just some of the writings where it talks about money transmitter services are considered money service businesses, MSBs, and are therefore subject to the requirement of the Bank Secrecy Act. They must register at the federal level with FinCEN, banks, foreign banks, or firms that are registered with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission or the U.S. Commodities Futures Trading Commission are not considered MSBs and do not have to register as such. So, you know, if you don't see from these things that we are dealing with a stacked deck at this point, I don't think you're ever going to. I really don't. I mean, this is, to me, it's been in the works since 2017. That's the reminder here. Honestly, it really is. That's the reminder. And I know you can't see that. It's probably a little blurry for you guys. But, you know, it's just more parts of the executive order. And you're having trouble seeing it, I'm sure. But a few participants in the Treasury outreach meeting, outreach meeting raised concerns that conversations with regulators could be used as a reason to initiate an enforcement investigation. It talks about all of the different aspects of a new financial economy. And that's what the executive order is about. And I don't mind telling you that, you know, the International Monetary Fund's in there too, right? European Commission, UK Financial Conduct Authority, Monetary Authority of Singapore, Dutch National Bank, Bank of Canada. I don't know how anybody could see this and understand that this executive order is from 2017 and still think that the United States is dragging its feet. What I tend to believe is that the United States isn't dragging their feet, is that they're waiting for a specific moment. They actually have a moment when all of this is going to take place. And the reason that I know that they know there's a, a launch date, but we don't know, is because Brian Brooks took action from the executive order and issued that clarity to get the ball moving. Imagine over the next coming weeks and months, the other things that are going to begin to take action from this document, this executive order to be implemented for a new financial economy as we head into the fourth quarter of 2020. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe, share with somebody you know, and I'll catch all of you on the next one.